Okay, good morning. Today is uh, the 23rd day of Sivan. And we are still holding in the middle of chapter 7. Chapter 7 is a very long chapter. Today, the Shtiyar will be in memory, Le'ila Nishmas, my father-in-law. Uh, today is his yard site. He was Ben Shneer Zalman. He was very instrumental in bringing my wife and myself here as Shlichas in Sheep said Bay, may his Nashama have an Aliyah. And may we be reunited very soon with the coming of Mashiach very soon. Amen. I'm going to mute everyone so, so we can have a good cheer. Okay. So uh, today's shir really is a very uh, is talking about a very fundamental fundamental topic in in Hasidus. and that is called the tzimtzum. Tzimtzum literally means contraction, and this is based on what the Arizal says. There's in the writing of the Arizal, it says that God contracted his light, so to speak. And he removed his light in order to bring, make place for this world to exist. It says he removed the light and there was an, a, an, a void. And then after the void, Hashem sort of drew down a lower, more limited level of light to create this world. Very, very roughly uh, explained. It's a very deep concept. However, this idea of the tzimtzum, the contraction, there was some misunderstanding among some of the great sages. And there was the debate whether the tzimtzum, the contraction, is literal or it's not literal. In fact, in the beginning of the Hasidist movement, uh, one, one of the things that the people who opposed Hasidus, they, uh, they opposed, they questioned what Hasidus says is the fact that the Alter Rebbe says in the Tanya that uh, even when a goy comes and disturbs you in doing the right things, uh, serving Hashem, is Hashem is in him. God is telling him so to speak, what to do. And for them, it was very uh, unheard of. How could you say something like this about Hashem? Hashem is in the this lowest places. Is Hashem in a, in, in a place which is not pure, for example? And of course, the answer is yes. Hashem is everywhere. And why? This is what is going to explain. So there's some who, uh, who came with the, the, the some school of thought that said that the tzimtzum is literally literal, that Hashem literally removed his light and is like uh, watching over everything from above. And and what does it mean? He's watching everything from above. Today we can understand. We have satellites. We have everything. I can see. You know, everything is watching from above. And Alter Rebbe explains here. Val Shem Tov explained, one of the foundations of the Val Shem Tov teaching is that the Tzimtzum is not Kipshuto. Tzimtzum is not literal. You know, there is, a, there is a, uh, uh, another a verse that says, Alo et ve'ta'aretz I am filled the heaven and the earth, says Hashem. So, when Hashem says, I am filled everything, Hashem literally is filled everything. So the, the school of thought that says that tzimtzum kipshuto, the, liter, the, the tzimtzum, the contraction, means literal, they said that this verse is not literal. That when it says Hashem is, is everywhere, he's, he's watching everywhere. And here comes the Alter Rebbe and it says that based on what we explained in, this, in, the, in the beginning of this chapter, and the previous chapters as well, that Hashem 
Hashem is not like humans. At Hashem, His will is Himself. And when we say, as Ani Hashem lo shaniti, that nothing can cause change in Hashem, that means nothing can cause change in Hashem. If there is something outside of Hashem, that itself is a change in a person. In Hashem? God forbid. So when we're saying that Hashem is here in this world, Hashem is literally here in this world. And in every aspect. Except that the world doesn't affect him. It doesn't affect his oneness, his unity. And this is what the Alter Rebbe continues in today's chapter. So let's uh, look inside. Ve'ine mikan says the Alter Rebbe mikan light of what has been said above, that God's knowledge is holy, one with God himself, or otherwise it would imply multiplicity in one who is a perfect unity. Yesh lehovin, yesh lehovin shigigas miktas chachomi beineim Hashem yechaper ba'adam. So we can, it is possible to understand the error of certain scholars in their own eyes. May God forgive them. He spoke very sharp words uh, about those scholars. For even those who have erred unwittingly are in need of atonement. He says, who erred and misinterpreted in their study of the writings of the Arizal and understood the doctrine of Tzimtzum, which is mentioned therein, literally. And that's what, 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 is it, what does it mean? What did they say? That the only one, blessed be he, removed himself and his essence, God forbid, from this world. Meaning that he literally removed his presence rather than merely concealing it. They do believe, obviously, in that Hashem does everything by Ashgacha Prothes, the divine providence. Al kola yitzurim kulam asha bashamayim mimal velohats mitoch. And only guides from above with individual providence, all the created beings which are in the heavens above and on earth below. That's the way these people, these scholars, interpreted the concept what the Arizal says. Tzimtzum, contraction, they took it literally. So the Alter Rebbe says it's impossible to say so. Why not? Says the Alter Rebbe, Vehine milvad she'i efsha klal loi ma'inyin at tzimtzum kipshuto yishehimi mikri aguf ala Kadosh Baruch Hu. Anivdal mehem rivibuis avdol ezanen kids. First of all, says the Alter Rebbe, it's impossible to say tzimtzum, a contraction about some, about Hashem, the contraction is a physical condition. Hashem is not physical. So the concept of contraction is impossible to say. It's ludicrous. That's the first of all. But the way he says it now, apart from the fact that it is altogether impossible to apply the doctrine of Tzimtzum literally, but that would be an instance of corporal phenomena. To the only one, blessed be Hashem, you, can, you cannot sus- subscribe to Hashem, this, who is set apart from them by infinite myriads of separations. The difference between us and Hashem is endless separations. So the idea of contraction at all is impossible to, to subscribe to, to divinity, to Hashem. But besides that, says the Alter Rebbe, he says, 
in this thing itself, they also do not speak wisely. Since they are believers, the sons of believers, that the Holy One, blessed be, knows all the created beings in the lower world and, and exercises his providence over them. So they all believe that Hashem gives us divine providence and is guiding every single detail of us. Thus, they themselves admit that God's knowledge and providence extends to this physical world. Says, and there and, and per, perforce, therefore, we must say that his knowledge of them does not add plurality and innovation to him, for he knows all by knowing himself. Any person, when he knows something, anything that you know, you gain knowledge, you gain something else. There's something you didn't have until now. But by Hashem knowing something, knowing us, knowing every creature of the world, doesn't add anything in Hashem because Hashem knows us by knowing Himself. Thus, as it were in His essence and being and His knowledge, of created beings are all one. And it brings also what it says in the Zoya, something to support this, this uh, explanation of the Alta Rebbe. It says, This is what it says in Tikkunim, this is part of the Zoya in Tikkun and Zion. The leis asa ponu mine loy be loin ve loy be tatoin. So then this is what it stated in Tikkunim, Tikkun 57. There is no place devoid of him, neither in the upper worlds nor in the lower worlds. So thus, we find it ex explicitly stated in the Tikkun Ezoya that God himself is to be found within the lower world, the lowest of which this physical, uh, uh, the low, lowest of which is this physical world. And then he brings another place in the Zayar, which is a part of called Raya Mehemne. It says, Raya Mehemne Parsha Spinchas. It says, Iu Tofis Bekulo, Veleis Man de Tofis Be. And translation. It says, and in, in the portion of the Zoya called Raya Mehemne, on the Parshas, Pinchas, we read, he grasps all, and none can grasp him. Normally, when a person grasps something, you grasp when a person, you walk into the room, you are now in the room. Now the room also grasps you. Part of you is, is in the room. Everything in, in, in the physical condition, the, the, the grasping is mutual. But by Hashem, it says the Zayal, he grasps everything but nothing grasps him. You know, there's the famous uh, question that, uh, philosophical question that people ask, can God create something so heavy that he himself cannot lift up? And of course, understanding this, understanding this uh, idea of, of what al Rebbe explains here in the Hasidus, in this chapter, we understand that the question is not even a question. We'll go back to the inside. We got disconnected a second. There we go. So that's what it says in the Zoya. 
So he grasps all and none can grasp him. He encompasses all, all the wor all world, and now uh, no one goes out from his domain. He fills or permeates the wor all worlds. He binds and unites a kind to its kind, upper with lower. And there is no closeness in the four elements of which this corporal world is comprised, except through the Holy One, blessed be He, when He is within them. It is only through His power that these four inherently contradictory elements are bound together. So we see that Hashem is in every little detail. At Kalashainoi, until here, is the words of the Raya Mehem. Says the Alter Rebbe, and he explains, V'ratzoinei lo'imar, leis man defos tofis be'i she'ein mi she'it fois be'asog asrich lo'i, mikol sichlima elyonim be'ma'usri v'atmusri shel ha'kadosh baruch hu. He says, none can grasp him, means that there is no one, even amongst all the supernal intelligence, meaning, the incorporal creatures of the higher spiritual world whose apprehensions of divinity is superhuman, nevertheless, they also, they cannot grasp Hashem, who can grasp by means of intel intellect the essence and being of the Holy One, Blessed Be He. This is not even the highest form, the angels, no one can grasp. Setima the whole stimming, as it is written in Tikkunim, he is hidden from all the spiritual world, which are themselves hidden from the physical creature. So the spiritual world that are hidden, Hashem is hidden from them also. And no thoughts, no thought can grasp you at all. And even in the lower world, there are none of, uh, that grasps him, even though he permeates all worlds and animates them with a life force suited to each individual cre created being in particular. Nevertheless, he says, Nevertheless, he says, 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 you cannot compare the way a, a soul is in the body, the way then the way Hashem is in this world. For this vestment is not like that of the soul of a man, which clothes himself within his body and is grasped within it. What does it mean? He grasped it in it, he says, to the extent that it is affected and influenced by changes involving the body and its pain, such as a, uh, uh, from blows or cold or heat or fire and the like. The soul is affected by these changes. The Holy One, blessed be He, however, is not affected by any of the changes of this world from summer to winter and from day to night. Kedichsiv, as it says in the Pasuk in the Torah, Gam choyshech lo yachshich mibeko velaylo kayom yoyo. As it is written, even darkness does not obscure for you, and the night illuminates like the day. Hashem is not affected by this. Why lefisha ain't a neat pas klal teicha oilamais afal gavdem and balaloi? For he is not grasped within the worlds at all, even though he is he fills them. He fills them. That's why this would alter have explained that this is the meaning of the the simtum ain't a kipshuta that the simtum the contraction is not literal. And therefore, we can say that Hashem is everywhere, and but at the same time, is not affected by anything. 
and say that, that you cannot hide anywhere. So a person doesn't understand this. It says, well, so when you're sitting in the bathroom, is Hashem there also? So in what? In, so in the bathroom, you can, maybe in the bathroom you can sin. So the guy answered, oh yeah, but he can pick through the hole. But uh, obviously this is the idea of Hashem being everywhere and, and not being affected by, by anything explains this concept. And al is going to continue this, uh, in the next uh, shiurim as well. And this is the end of today's shiur of the 23rd of Sivan. By the way, the 23rd of Sivan is a very, very powerful day. And it is, this is actually a best kept secret because not too many people are aware of that. The Rebbe pointed it out in 1983, I believe it was. The Rebbe pointed out that it says in the Megillah, in, uh, on Purim, when we read, it says that on this day, the 23rd day of Sivan, Achashverosh, King Achashverosh, ordered the, to, to write everything what Mordechai uh, decreed and to carry out his decree. And, and, and in the deeper meaning what that means, it says in Hasidus that when we're talking about King Achashverosh, we're referring to Hashem. Mordechai a Yehudi refers to every single Jew. He says that when a Jew decides to act like Mordechai, who was completely given over to Hashem, and this day, today, Chav Gimel Sivan, you make a, a decision, if, even if it's in a small thing, you make a decision, a firm decision, a connecting to Hashem with Mesiros Nefesh, then Hashem carries out your decree. Take advantage of this. Today, Chav Gimel Sivan. Hashem should help. We should have very soon the kids of Iran and Sheikh Le'afa should be only good things. And uh, uh, please share, please share this with other other Yidden. And any questions, now is the time to ask.